Good afternoon. I'm George Edwin Taylor. Was I born the son of a free person or of a slave? Actually, it was both. But in the end, it didn't matter. You see, I was an orphan by the time I was five years old. Since my mother was a free person, the law said I was free. My father, however, was a slave. And in February 1859, Arkansas said, all free people of color had to leave the state. I was only two years old then. What I learned at a young age is that the death rate in this country is very high for all people of color, as well as for those who are poor. This was the beginning of what developed my political philosophy. I do remember though, that I was a street urchin. I lived for several years in dry good boxes at the wharf. I rescued myself by hiding on the riverboat Hawkeye State. It traveled up the Mississippi to La Crosse, Wisconsin. There, I met Henry Southall, who was a black riverboat man. And later, I met his wife, Agnes. Now, it was a smart thing for a hungry young child to attach himself to two cooks. It's too bad though. I messed up that relationship by getting in trouble with the law. As a result, I was sent to live with Elizabeth Burt as a foster child. That would have been around 1868. Later in life, when she was having financial troubles, I helped her out. It was the least I could do for her after all she had done for me. But the greatest influence in my life came when I met Nathan Smith. Nathan Smith taught me the meaning of hard work. It was his firm hand and sound thinking that helped me understand the role of citizenship and the importance of an education. Nathan was a farmer and a former slave and disciplined in his work ethic. He was self-educated. Many men and women of all races sought his advice. I was a witness to this man's efforts in West Salem and La Crosse. The court sent many young unruly people to his farm instead of a penitentiary for rehabilitation. I was one of these young men. Senior citizens abandoned by their families were also members of his farm. We would all help Nathan and his wife, Sarah, run their farm in West Salem. Nathan eventually sent four young men to college. Again, I was one of these young men. Because of Nathan's guidance and encouragement, as well as his sending me to college, I had the confidence to be able to run a newspaper in La Crosse from 1886 through 1887 called the Wisconsin Labor Advocate. It focused on labor-related political activities of the time and the conflicts between laborers of the time. As a black man, I'd like to have been viewed with the greatness of Booker T. Washington, Frederick Douglass, W.E.B. Du Bois. These men could have been the ones to run for president opposite Teddy Roosevelt in 1904. Instead, it was me. All I can say is, if you were in a room full of people wanting their equal civil and political rights, how do you start? How do you look into the eyes of the people in that room and say, it is not your turn in this generation to receive equal protection under the law? How did I view the people in this imaginary room? They were all workers. And workers needed to have equal representation in the legislature. They should not be hindered 
by special interests and the money they used to buy politicians, if the workers were to have equal representation, education, civil and political rights, the workers would move the country in the right direction. This was a populist view. However, it was no longer acceptable in America. It was more palatable coming from a black man as a member of the National Negro Liberty Party running for president in 1904. I eventually moved to Florida. I worked for Tampa's Florida Promoter. I was also editor to several other newspapers in Florida. The Daily Reporter and the Black Star edition of the Florida Times Union. I was one of the nation's most influential black Democrats. I even marched in President Woodrow Wilson's inaugural parade in Washington, D.C. George Edwin Taylor spent the remainder of his adult life in the Jacksonville, Florida area, where he passed away in December of 1925.